for as long as humankind has existed. It's been hard at work trying to uncover mysteries, physical and metaphysical. In the edition of Avatars of the Astral Worlds, we'll be looking at psychics and clairvoyance, the truth, the predictions, and everything in between. What is a psychic? A psychic is a person who claims to use extrasensory perception, or ESP for short, to identify information hidden from the normal senses, particularly involving telepathy or clairvoyance, or who performs acts that are inexplicable by natural laws, such as psychokinesis or apportion. Although many people believe in psychic abilities, the scientific consensus is that there is no proof of the existence of such powers, and describes the practice as pseudoscience. The word psychic is also used as an adjective to describe such abilities. Psychics encompass people in a variety of roles. Some are theatrical performers, such as stage magicians, who use various techniques, example, prestidigitation, cold reading, and hot reading, to produce the appearance of such abilities for entertainment purposes. A large industry and network exist whereby people advertised as psychics provide advice and counsel to clients. Famous psychics include Edgar Case, Ingo Swan, Peter Herkos, Janet Lee, Jose Ortiz El Samaritano, Miss Cleo, John Edward, Sylvia Brown, and Tyler Henry. Psychic powers are asserted by psychic detectives and practices, such as psychic archaeology and even psychic surgery. Critics attribute psychic powers to intentional trickery or self-delusion. In 1988, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences reported on the subject. It concluded there is no scientific justification from research conducted over a period of 130 years for the existence of parapsychological phenomena. A study attempted to repeat recently reported parapsychological experiments that appeared to support the existence of precognition. Attempts to replicate the results, which involved performance on a memory test to ascertain if post-test information would affect it, failed to produce significant effects, and thus do not support the existence of psychic ability of this kind. Psychics are sometimes featured in science fiction and fantasy fiction. Examples of fiction featuring characters with psychic powers include the Star Wars franchise, which features force-sensitive beings that can see into the future and move objects telekinetically, along with Dungeons and Dragons, and some of the works of Stephen King, amongst many others. History The word psychic is derived from the Greek word psychikos, of the mind or mental, and refers in part to the human mind or psyche X. Psychic turmoil The Greek word also means soul. In Greek mythology, the maiden psyche was the deification of the human soul. The word derivation of the Latin psyche is from the Greek psyche, literally breath, a derivative of psyche, to breathe or to blow hence, to live. French astronomer and spiritualist Camille Flammarion are credited for having first used the word psychic, while it was later introduced to the English language by Edward William Cox in the 1870s. Early seers and prophets Elaborate systems of divination and fortune-telling date back to ancient times. Perhaps the most widely known method of early civilization fortune-telling was astrology, where practitioners believed the relative positions of celestial bodies could lend insight into people's lives and even predict their future circumstances. Some fortune-tellers were said to be able to make predictions without using these elaborate systems or in conjunction with them through some direct apprehension or vision of the future. These people were known as seers or prophets, and in later times as clairvoyant French words meaning clear sight or clear seeing and psychics. Seers formed a functionary role in early civilization, often serving as advisors, priests, and judges. Several examples are included in biblical accounts. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 9 illustrates one such functionary task when Samuel is asked to find the donkeys of the future King Saul. The role of the prophet appeared perennially in ancient cultures. In Egypt, the priests of the sun deity Ra at Memphis acted as seers. In ancient Assyria, 
Seers were called Nabu, meaning to call or announce. The Delphic Oracle is one of the earliest stories in classical antiquity of prophetic abilities. The Pythia, the priestess presiding over the Oracle of Apollo at Delphi, was believed to be able to deliver prophecies inspired by Apollo during rituals beginning in the 8th century BC. It is often said that the Pythia had oracles in an agitated state induced by vapors rising from the ground. She spoke gibberish, believed to be the voice of Apollo, which priests reshaped into the enigmatic prophecies preserved in Greek literature. Other scholars believe records from the time indicate that the Pythia spoke intelligibly and gave predictions in her voice. The Pythia was a position served by a succession of women, probably selected from amongst a guild of priestesses of the temple. The last recorded response was given in 393 AD, when the Emperor Theodosius I ordered pagan temples to cease operation. Recent geological investigations suggest that ethylene gas caused Pythia's state of inspiration. One of the most enduring historical references to what some consider psychic ability is the prophecies of Mitchell de Nostradame 1503-1566, often Latinized Nostradamus, published during the French Renaissance period. Nostradamus was a French apothecary and seer who wrote collections of prophecies that have since become famous worldwide and have rarely been out of print since his death. He is best known for his book Les Prophecies, the first edition of which appeared in 1555. Compiled together, his written works are known to have contained at least 6,388 quatrains or prophecies, as well as at least 11 annual calendars. Most of the quatrains deal with disasters, such as plagues, earthquakes, wars, floods, invasions, murders, droughts, and battles, all undated. Nostradamus is a controversial figure. His many enthusiasts and the popular press credit him with predicting many major world events. Interest in his work is still considerable, especially in the media and popular culture. By contrast, most academic scholars maintain that the associations made between world events and Nostradamus quatrains are essentially the result of misinterpretations or mistranslations, sometimes deliberate or else are so tenuous as to render them useless as evidence of any genuine predictive power. In addition to the belief that some historical figures were predisposed to psychic experiences, some psychic abilities were thought to be available to everyone on occasion. For example, the idea of prophetic dreams was common and persistent in many ancient cultures. 19th Century Progression In the mid-19th century, modern spiritualism became prominent in the United States and the United Kingdom. The movement's distinguishing feature was the belief that mediums could contact the spirits of the dead to lend insight to the living. The movement was fueled in part by anecdotes of psychic powers. One such person believed to have extraordinary abilities was Daniel Douglas Holm, who gained fame during the Victorian period for his reported ability to levitate to various heights and speak to the dead. As the spiritualist movement grew, other comparable groups arose, including the Theosophical Society, co-founded in 1875 by Helena Blavatsky. Theosophy coupled spiritualist elements with Eastern mysticism and was influential in the early 20th century, later influencing the New Age movement during the 1970s. Blavatsky herself claimed considerable psychic powers. Late 20th Century Psychics were commonly associated with New Age culture by the late 20th century. Psychic readings and advertising for psychics were widespread from the 1960s on, as readings were offered for a fee and given in settings such as over the phone, in a home, or at psychic fairs. Popular Culture In a survey reported in 1990 by the National Academy of Sciences members, only 2% of respondents thought that extrasensory perception had been scientifically demonstrated. Another 2% believed that the phenomena happened sometimes. Asked about research in the field, 22% felt that it should be discouraged, 
63% that it should be allowed but not encouraged, and 10% that it should be encouraged. Neuroscientists were the most hostile to parapsychology of all the specialties. A survey of the beliefs of the general United States population about paranormal topics was conducted by the Gallup Organization in 2005. The survey found that 41% of those polled believed in extrasensory perception and 26% believed in clairvoyance. 31% of those surveyed indicated that they believe in telepathy or psychic communication. A poll of 439 college students conducted in 2006 by researchers Brian Farha of Oklahoma City University and Gary Stewart of the University of Central Oklahoma suggested that college seniors and graduate students were more likely to believe in psychic phenomena than first-year college students. 23% of first-year college students expressed a belief in paranormal ideas. The percentage was more significant among college seniors, 31%, and graduate students. The poll showed lower belief in psychic phenomena among science students than social science and education students. Some people also believe that anyone can have psychic abilities that can be activated or enhanced through the study and practice of various disciplines and techniques, such as meditation and divination, with many books and websites being dedicated to instruction in these methods. Another popular belief is that psychic ability is hereditary, with a psychic parent passing their abilities on to their children. Psychics in Science Fiction Psychic abilities are standard in science fiction, often under psionics. They may be depicted as innate and heritable, as in Alfred Bester's The Demolished Man, A. E. Van Vogt's Slan, Anne McCaffrey's Talents Universe series or setting, and the television series Babylon 5. Another recurring trope is the conveyance of psychic power through psychoactive drugs, as in the Dune novels and indirectly in the Scanners films and the ghosts in the StarCraft franchise. In Madeline Ellingle's A Wind in the Door and Robert A. Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land, psychic abilities may be achieved by any human who learns the proper mental discipline kithing in the former work. Popular movies include The Initiation of Sarah. Psychic characters are also familiar in superhero comics, for instance, Jean Grey, Professor X, Emma Frost, and many others from the Marvel Comics X-Men. More characters include Raven Baxter and Booker Baxter from the Disney Channel original series that So Raven and its spin-off Raven's Home. The Disney Channel original series American Dragon. Jake Long features recurring characters Kara and Sara, who are twin psychics claimed to be the descendants of the Oracle of Delphi. Their visions also contrast their personalities. Kara is a goth that sees only positive visions, while Sara is always in a good mood despite only seeing negative visions. Criticism and Research Parapsychological research has attempted to use random number generators to test for psychokinesis, mild sensory deprivation in the Gansfeld experiment to test for extrasensory perception, and research trials conducted under contract by the U.S. government to investigate remote viewing. Critics such as Ed J. Gracely say that this evidence is not sufficient for acceptance, partly because the intrinsic probability of psychic phenomena is minimal. Critics such as Ray Hyman and the National Science Foundation suggest that parapsychology has methodological flaws that can explain parapsychologists' experimental results to paranormal explanations. Various critics have classed the field as pseudoscience. This has been mainly due to a lack of replication of results by independent experimenters. The evidence presented for psychic phenomena is not sufficiently verified for scientific acceptance, and there exist many non-paranormal alternative explanations for claimed instances of psychic events. Parapsychologists, who generally believe that there is some evidence for psychic ability, disagree with critics who believe that no psychic ability exists and that many of the instances of more popular psychic phenomena, such as mediumism, can be attributed to non-paranormal techniques, such as cold reading, hot reading, or even self-delusion.
Cold reading techniques would include psychics using flattery, intentionally making descriptions, statements, or predictions about a person vague and ambiguous, and surreptitiously moving on to another prediction when the psychic deems the audience to be non-responsive. Magicians such as James Randi, Ian Rowland, and Darren Brown have demonstrated techniques and results similar to famous psychics. Still, they present physical and psychological explanations as opposed to paranormal ones. In January 2008, the results of a study using neuroimaging were published to provide what are purported to be the most favorable experimental conditions. The study included appropriate emotional stimuli and had biologically or emotionally related participants, such as twins. The experiment was designed to produce positive results if telepathy, clairvoyance, or precognition occurred. Still, no different neuronal responses were found between psychic stimuli and non-psychic stimuli, while variations in the same stimuli showed anticipated effects on brain activation patterns. The researchers concluded that these findings are the strongest evidence yet obtained against the existence of paranormal mental phenomena. James Alcock had cautioned the researchers against the wording of the said statement. A detailed study of Sylvia Brown's predictions about missing persons and murder cases has found that despite her repeated claims of more than 85% correct, Brown has not even been mostly correct in a single case. Concerning television psychics, James Underdown states that testing psychics in a studio setting is difficult as there are too many areas to control. The psychic could be getting help from anyone on the set. The editor controls everything. They can make a psychic look superior or ridiculous depending on the direction of the producer. In an independent investigations group expose of John Edward and James Van Prague, they discovered that what was said on the tape day and what was broadcast to the public were substantially different in the accuracy. They're getting rid of the wrong guesses. Once you pull back the curtain and see how it's done, it's not impressive at all. Investigator Ben Radford states that scammers use various psychological principles to ensnare their prey. Their state of mind, belief in psychic abilities, unhappy with something happening in their lives, and looking for answers. The psychic will instruct the client not to tell their friends or family, as they know they may be warned away from the psychic. With curse removal, the psychic may say that the magic will not work or worsen if they tell anyone about their involvement with the psychic. According to Radford, the con games from psychics can play out over weeks, months, or even years. The psychic is playing the long game and looking to extract as much money as possible. Radford claims that when victims realize they have been scammed, they are often too embarrassed to come forward. Skeptical activist Susan Jerbic has summarized several techniques which she says are used by psychics to create their effects. And what of clairvoyance? Where does it fit into the whole psychic picture? Clairvoyance from French Claire Clear and voyance vision is the claimed ability to gain information about an object, person, location, or physical event through extrasensory perception. Any person claimed to have such ability is said accordingly to be a clairvoyant, one who sees clearly. Claims for the existence of paranormal and psychic abilities such as clairvoyance have not been supported by scientific evidence. Parapsychology explores this possibility, but the scientific community does not accept the existence of the paranormal. The scientific community widely considers parapsychology including the study of clairvoyance, a pseudoscience. Usage. Pertaining to the ability of clear-sightedness, clairvoyance refers to the paranormal ability to see persons and events that are distant in time or space. It can be divided into roughly three classes. Precognition, the ability to perceive or predict future events. Retrocognition, the ability to see past events. Remote viewing, the perception of contemporary events happening outside of the range of ordinary perception. In history and religion. Throughout history, there have been numerous places and times in which people have claimed themselves or others to be clairvoyant. 
In several religions, stories of specific individuals being able to see things far removed from their immediate sensory perception are commonplace, especially within pagan religions where oracles were used. Prophecy often involved some degree of clairvoyance, especially when future events were predicted. This ability has sometimes been attributed to a higher power rather than to the person performing it. Christianity Many Christian saints were said to be able to see or know things that were far removed from their immediate sensory perception as a kind of gift from God, including Columba of Iona, Padre Pio, and Anne Catherine Emmerich. Jesus Christ in the Gospels is also recorded as being able to know things that were far removed from his immediate human perception. Jainism In Jainism, clairvoyance is regarded as one of the five kinds of knowledge. The beings of hell and heaven, Devas are said to possess clairvoyance by birth. According to the Jain text Sarvartha City, this kind of knowledge has been called a vadhi as it ascertains matter in downward range or knows objects within limits. Anthroposophy Rudolf Steiner, famous as a clairvoyant himself, claimed that it is easy to confuse his own emotional and spiritual being with the objective spiritual world of a clairvoyant. Parapsychology the earliest record of somnambulistic clairvoyance is credited to the Marquis de Pysiger, a follower of Franz Mesmer, who in 1784 was treating a dull-witted local peasant named Victor Race. During treatment, Race reportedly would go into a trance and undergo a personality change, becoming fluent and articulate and giving diagnoses and prescriptions for his own disease and those of others. Clairvoyance was a reported ability of some mediums during the spiritualist period of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Psychics of many descriptions have claimed clairvoyant ability up to the present day. Early researchers of clairvoyance included William Gregory, Gustav Pagestecher, and Rudolf Tischner. Clairvoyance experiments were reported in 1884 by Charles Richet. Playing cards were enclosed in envelopes and a subject put under hypnosis attempted to identify them. The issue was said to have been successful in 133 trials, but the results dropped to the chance level when performed before a group of scientists in Cambridge. J. M. Pears and E. C. Pickering reported a similar experiment. They tested 36 subjects over 23,384 trials that did not obtain above chance scores. Ivor Lloyd Tuckett 1911 and Joseph McCabe 1920 analyzed early cases of clairvoyance and concluded they were best explained by coincidence or fraud. In 1919, the magician P.T. Selbit staged a seance at his flat in Bloomsbury. The spiritualist Arthur Conan Doyle attended the seance and declared the clairvoyance manifestations to be genuine. A significant development in clairvoyance research came when J.B. Rhine, a parapsychologist at Duke University, introduced a standard methodology with a traditional statistical approach to analyzing data as part of his research into extrasensory perception. Some psychological departments attempted to repeat Rhine's experiments with failure. With 132 subjects, W.S. Cox 1936 from Princeton University produced 25,064 trials in a playing card ESP experiment. Cox concluded, there is no evidence of extrasensory perception either in the average man or of the group investigated or in any particular individual of that group. The discrepancy between these results and those obtained by Ryan is due either to uncontrollable factors in experimental procedure or to the difference in the subjects. Four other psychological departments failed to replicate Ryan's results. It was revealed that Ryan's experiments contained methodological flaws and procedural errors. Ryan tested Eileen Garrett at Duke University in 1933 with Zener cards. Certain symbols were placed on the cards and sealed in an envelope, and she was asked to guess their contents. She performed poorly and later criticized the tests by claiming the cards lacked a psychic energy called energy stimulus and that she could not perform clairvoyance to order. 
The parapsychologist Samuel Soule and his colleagues tested Garrett in May 1937. Most of the experiments were carried out in the psychological laboratory at the University College London. A total of over 12,000 guesses were recorded, but Garrett failed to produce above chance level. In his report, Soule wrote, in the case of Mrs. Eileen Garrett, we failed to find the slightest confirmation of Dr. J. B. Ryan's remarkable claims relating to her alleged powers of extrasensory perception. Not only did she fail when I took charge of the experiments, but she failed equally when four other carefully trained experimenters took my place. Remote viewing. Remote viewing, also known as remote sensing, remote perception, telesthesia, and traveling clairvoyance, is the alleged paranormal ability to perceive a remote or hidden target without the support of the senses. In recent times, a well-known study of remote viewing has been the U.S. government-funded project at the Stanford Research Institute from the 1970s through the mid-1990s. In 1972, Harold Puthoff and Russell Targ initiated a series of human subject studies to determine whether participants, the viewers, or recipients could reliably identify and accurately describe salient features of remote locations or targets. As part of the experiment protocol in the early studies, a human sender was typically present at a remote location. A three-step process was used. The first step is to randomly select the target conditions the senders experienced. Secondly, participants were asked to verbally express or sketch their impressions of the remote scene in the viewing step. Thirdly, these descriptions were matched by separate judges, as closely as possible, with the intended targets in the judging step. The term remote viewing was coined to describe this overall process. The first paper by Puthoff and Harg on remote viewing was published in Nature in March 1974. In it, the team reported some degree of remote viewing success. After the publication of these findings, other attempts to replicate the experiments were carried out with remotely linked groups using computer conferencing. The psychologists David Marks and Richard Kamen attempted to replicate TARD and Puthoff's remote viewing experiments that were carried out in the 1970s at the Stanford Research Institute. In a series of 35 studies, they could not replicate the results, so they investigated the procedure of the original experiments. Marx and Kamen discovered that the notes given to the judges in Targ and Puthoff's experiments contained clues as to which order they were carried out, such as referring to yesterday's two targets, or they had the date of the session written at the top of the page. They concluded that these clues were the reason for the experiment's high hit rates. Marx achieved 100% accuracy without visiting any of the sites himself but using cues. James Randi has written control tests by several other researchers, eliminating several sources of cueing and extraneous evidence present in the original trials, which produced negative results. Students were also able to solve Puthoff and Targ's locations from the clues that had inadvertently been included in the transcripts. In 1980, Charles Tart claimed that a rejudging of the transcripts from one of Targ and Puthoff's experiments revealed an above-chance result. Targ and Puthoff again refused to provide copies of the transcripts, and it was not until July 1985 that they were made available for study when it was discovered they still contained sensory cues. Marx and Christopher Scott 1986 wrote, Considering the importance for the remote viewing hypothesis of adequate cue removal, Tart's failure to perform this basic task seems beyond comprehension. As previously concluded, remote viewing has not been demonstrated in the experiments conducted by Puthoff and Targ, only the repeated failure of the investigators to remove sensory cues. In 1982, Robert John, then Dean of the School of Engineering at Princeton University, wrote a comprehensive review of psychic phenomena from an engineering perspective. His paper included numerous references to remote viewing studies at the time. Others have proposed statistical flaws in his work in the parapsychological community and the general scientific community. Scientific Reception 
According to scientific research, clairvoyance is generally explained as confirmation bias, expectancy bias, fraud, hallucination, self-delusion, sensory leakage, subjective validation, wishful thinking, or failure to appreciate the rate of chance occurrences, not as a paranormal power. The scientific community generally regards parapsychology as a pseudoscience. In 1988, the U.S. National Research Council concluded, the committee finds no scientific justification from research conducted over a period of 130 years for the existence of parapsychological phenomena. Skeptics say that it would have become abundantly clear if clairvoyance were a reality. They also contend that those who believe in paranormal phenomena do so for merely psychological reasons. The search for a valid and reliable clairvoyance test has resulted in thousands of experiments. One control procedure has invited senders to telepathically transmit one of four visual images to receivers deprived of sensation in a nearby chamber BEM and Honorton 1994. The result, a reported 32% accurate response rate, surpassing the chance rate of 25%. But follow-up studies have, depending on who was summarizing the results, failed to replicate the phenomenon or produced mixed results BEM and others, 2001, Milton and Weissman, 2002, Storm, 2000-2003. One skeptic, magician James Randi, had a long-standing offer of one million US dollars to anyone who proves a genuine psychic power under proper observing conditions Randi, 1999. French, Australian, and Indian groups have parallel offers of up to 200,000 euros to anyone with demonstrable paranormal abilities CFI, 2003. Large as these sums are, the scientific seal of approval would be worth far more to anyone whose claims could be authenticated. To refute those who say there is no ESP, one need only produce a single person who can demonstrate a single, reproducible ESP phenomenon. So far, no such person has emerged. Randy's offer has been publicized for three decades, and dozens of people have been tested sometimes under the scrutiny of an independent panel of judges. Still, nothing. People's desire to believe in the paranormal is stronger than all the evidence that it does not exist. Susan Blackmore, Blackmore's First Law, 2004. Clairvoyance is considered hallucination by mainstream psychiatry. So what do you think? Is the answer clear? Can you predict whether or not psychic powers and clairvoyance will be the norm? We'll see. For now, we'll just have to leave the doors open for the avatars of astral worlds.